I rise to comment on the tragedy of the civilian airliner shot out of the sky by a Russian surface-to-air missile, cutting short the lives of 298 innocent civilians. Parents, children, and spouses of victims have expressed deep anguish, and we all feel their grief. All of us agree that the images we are seeing from the crash site are heartbreaking and sickening. President Obama, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte, others, leaders throughout the world, have expressed their outrage at the vicious, uncivilized act that took place at 33,000 feet over the country of Ukraine. A few days ago, British Prime Minister David Cameron stated firmly, and let me quote, for too long there has been a reluctance on the part of too many European countries to face up to the implications of what is happening in eastern Ukraine. Elegant forms of words and fine communiques are no substitute for real action. The weapons and fighters being funneled across the border between Russia and eastern Ukraine, the support to the militias, the half-truths, the bluster, the delays, they have to stop. As the Prime Minister acknowledged, this is a moment when words of condemnation and expression of grief simply are not enough. This is a moment when action must follow the outrage and rhetorical condemnation. The tragedy of Malaysian Air 17 will be, I believe, a defining event in history. It's a defining event for Russia, first and foremost, and its president, Vladimir Putin. It is no secret that Putin has imperial ambitions motivated by his pathological insecurities and a quest to restore lost glories to Mother Russia. These are dangerous delusions, and that, if they're not confronted firmly, will come to threaten us all. But it's also a defining event for the United States and its European allies. The festering danger in Ukraine is the result of the civilized world's faltering half-steps as a meager, timid, and all-too-minimal response to Russia's invasion of a neighbor in violation of sovereign borders. This is an opportunity for American leadership in step with our European allies to spur the community of nations to act together and be a force for good and be a force for the right change that needs to take place, not later, but now. And it's a defining event for President Obama and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Today, these two leaders, the two who are most able to influence this situation, can stand up and demonstrate leadership that will shape history. So this is a pivotal moment, a pivotal moment for the United States, for Germany, for the European Union, and for the world. Given the significance of this event in this moment, what are we to do? I don't have all the answers. I've been suggesting harsh sanctions, sanctions that bite, that hit Russia hard ever since their invasion of Crimea. As I've earlier said, these have been, what has been done is far too short of what needs to be done to punish Russia for the acts of breach of sovereignty and now this brutal, terrible, tragic result and consequence of what they're doing in eastern Ukraine. So first, I think we need to ask the entire civilized world to join the United States our European allies and everyone join us in condemning this outrageous act. Events like this tragedy have no place in the modern world, and this unassailable fact needs to be acknowledged globally and more than once, repeatedly, until it becomes so loud that Putin and Russians can hear it in Moscow and in the Kremlin and see that what has taken place here is the direct result of their engagement in eastern Ukraine. Secondly, I think we need to demand complete cooperation with the ongoing investigation. Positive steps are beginning to take place far too late, but at least they're starting to take place. Our commitment to the rule of law, rules of evidence, 
and the demands of justice require that we go through this investigative process, and we must insist on the access to do so. We must demand full, immediate, unhindered access to the site of the tragedy, including all parts of the aircraft, missile battery, and site evidence, and most of all, proper treatment of the remains of the many victims. President Putin, by himself, can ensure that success and that access, and he absolutely must be required to do so. Third, we need to demand an immediate Russian stand down in the Ukraine. Crimes like Malaysia Air Flight 17 could only happen in such a lawless wasteland of renegades and desperados with their fingers on the triggers of the world's most advanced weapons. Lawlessness reigns in eastern Ukraine because the government of that nation does not yet have sovereign control of its own territory. The situation is greatly, greatly exacerbated as a result of President Putin's outrageous territorial aggression that has already severed an arm of Ukraine and threatens the entire country's disintegration. Make no mistake, the Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine have been organized, motivated, trained, equipped, unleashed, guided, and controlled by the forces of the Russian Federation, who are controlled themselves with totalitarian execution by none other than President Vladimir Putin. Now we see a new tragic result of this aggression and sponsorship of ruthless renegades, a blatant act of terrorism inflicted on innocent people. This problem will only get worse unless we demand, demand that Russian behavior change and Putin's aggression stop. It needs to be a voice that resounds from every nation, civilized nation in the world. The only solution to the Ukraine problem is the consistent, is doing what is consistent with international law. The demands of order and civility and the requirements of justice is what Russia must acknowledge and that the government of the Ukraine must have sovereign control over its own territory. Number four, the U.S. and Europe must at last act vigorously and in unison if we are to succeed in this effort. Until now, President Obama has sent largely weak signals to Putin about the seriousness of Russia's actions. And our European partners have been reluctant to act, some hypnotized by anxiety about their economic dependency on Russian oil and gas. Let us hope that after this horrific act of terror against 298 innocent passengers on Malaysia Air Flight 17, that this view is changing and changing quickly. History will see this event as a watershed moment. Some argue that the Soviet downing of Korean Flight 007 in 1983 was an event that exposed the true nature of the Soviet regime and hastened its decay. Similarly, Malaysia Air Flight 17 reveals to any remaining doubters the nature of Putin and his brutal ambitions and ruthlessness. With illusions stripped away and the inadequacy of half measures revealed, we must now act and act together. We can respond to this tragedy by forming and forging a new unity. But only the most robust and concerted actions to impose economic sanctions on Russia has a chance to change Putin's behavior and end Russian support for the separatist militants. And to be effective here, we and the Europeans must do this together, imposing these costs. We need to target the fragile, dependent Russian economy through sanctions on Russia's energy sector and state-backed arms exporter. And while it may take time for Russia to feel the effects of sanctions on the energy sector, we can take action today that would have an immediate effect. I have previously introduced legislation that prohibits all government contracts with Putin's arms dealers. Taking steps to meaningfully obstruct this agency's work and the revenue it provides the Russian state is among the most effective